Hey, what's happening, Roland? Well, I'll tell you what's happening today. Today is Friday, January 1st, 2021. Hey, what a deal. Brand new, brand new year. You know, last year was tough with all the pandemics going around. I caught the COVID. I lost some income and everything else was kind of kind of tough. And we've all suffered from it. I'm really looking forward to a really good year. Number one, the fishing's been pretty good up to this last cold front. That's what I wanted to talk about for today's fishing because my doctor said, see, I've had my shoulder operation and I can move my arm now. Look at this. Look at that. I can go. I can, I can do all my, my, uh, my different movements and I've been doing the therapy. I mean, the therapy uh, guy said, hey, hey, I'm perfect. I'm ready to go. So I can fish. I mean, I was going to go today, but what I did, I got on the telephone and I called some guys down the Everglades. I called three guys and I said, or the fish biting or fish biting because I wanted to go today. And they said, no, no, they're not really biting. Because see what happened, the water temperature got down to a below 60 degrees. Now, I told you a long time ago that the most important thing about bass fishing here in Florida is water temperature. You got to remember that. This is January 1st. Water temperature is the whole key to good fishing this time of year. You have to have the warmer in fact warming water well it is warming now it is 70 degrees you notice i'm in shorts but the water temperature is still kind of coming up it's rising starting to rise so i think this afternoon i'm going to call the guys again i think this afternoon is going to be a much better bite and i'm going to point out some lures that i'm going to try to use this afternoon or tomorrow when i go maybe i think i think would happen okay first you know the cinco now here's i've got a little bit of a alteration here i got a flipping cinco because where I'm going to go, there's a lot of reeds and stuff, and I can actually take that 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 weight. It's a 50-pound braid, and I can take it's a half-ounce weight, and I can flip that into some heavy cover. Now let's talk about some of my favorite lures. Okay, okay. Let's look. Let's talk about my my devil source. What do you think about a devil source? Well, let me tell you something. I think that it's too cold in the morning for this devil source. But once the water temperature gets up above 65 this afternoon late with the sun coming down like it is uh i'm going to be watching the alabama game Notre Dame game <laughs> so i'm not going to go fishing this afternoon that's that's a big day that's a big game for me okay so i think but this afternoon after about four o'clock the devil's horse might work here's a here's like a rapala top water plug another plug that of course you see me use all the time when the water's warm and particularly around the lily pads where they're spawning is a spro frog you know, a spro frog is just, just a killer deal. And then also there's a buzz frog that I've taken the spro and I've, and I've taken the, the regular thing and I've put a little buzz tail on it. And that's been a real good deal. But again, that's for warm weather. That's better in the summertime. When the water temperature is below 70 degrees, I don't think fast moving baits like that are going to pay off. Let's, let's see what I think will, will, will pay off. I think that one of the stalwart lures that you could use now the water temperature is in the 60s, is a chatterbait. Now here's a white one. Here's a white chatterbait. And it has a Zaco tail. That, that, that's a good compliment. Run it, I, I like to run it on, say, 20-pound uh, fluorocarbon or 17-pound fluorocarbon, for that matter. Or I could have this, this a little bit heavier one. This is a black and blue model. Again, a Zaco tail. That's, that's really, really been, been a really cool uh, combination for, for, for the cold weather. Another thing, of course, is the swim jig. You know, you see me using all the time the swim jigs, and I'm taking, a, in this case, a 3 eighths of an ounce swim jig, and I'm going to Zaco tail, nice little Zaco tail. Along with a swim jig, I use a swim bait. Again, that's kind of warmer water, but again, with the water temperature maybe this afternoon getting up in the 70 degree range, that still might happen. If it's not, if the water temperature is cold, I think a jig is going to pay off. That's a Metlock jig. You've seen me do a lot of things with a Metlock. That's the big one here, but I got all different sizes. And a jig, I think, will outproduce a worm this time of year in the cold weather, particularly for the big fish. I don't know that you can catch more fish. The Cinco probably will catch more fish. The Cinco will catch more numbers. But a big jig, like a half ounce jig, will catch a bigger fish in the long run. Okay, the old spinnerbait. You can't, you can't beat a spinnerbait that in the wintertime particularly when the wind blows. Now that's one of the things I'll do and the wind was blowing a little pretty hard this afternoon. It was really stirring the water up and it was blowing in. And I know some of the places that I want to fish, I'd get on the reedy shorelines and actually fish the, the windy side, windy shorelines. That's really been a big deal. 
fish in the windy side. So that's, that's kind of the compliment I have here, but here's a killer deal that I want to tell you about. This time of year, it's hard to beat a crankbait. Now here's a lipless crankbait. This is the Aruka Shad with Spro. And I helped design this plug. It's one that's well, been around for about 25 years now. And it's really, really been a good one. This is the Golden Shiner model. And I tell you, here in Florida, that Golden Shiner model is just a real big producer. It really catches fish on Okeechobee, all the Everglades. And another one that's really good is like a little square bill. This is, this is the little, little Spro Little John. Now that, that's a good one, like where there's rocks. Like for example, people don't realize that in, in Florida, wherever they have a canal, whenever you see a canal down through the South Florida, there's rocks there because there's rock underneath the water. I mean, they had to dig through the rock to build, dig that canal. So almost all the canals in South Florida have plenty of rocky places and that's excellent. That's an excellent lure. A little John and say 10 to 12 pound test line, you can always catch fish on a crankbait. Well, anyway, that's kind of my deal. Well, you know, what's happening to me lately is I haven't fished in three or four weeks because of the, my shoulder being bad. And also, and I started making turkey calls. Let's go over to where I'm making turkey calls because that's really kind of cool. I got some, some real big deals going on. And I'll talk about that. I made, I made a comment on, on a YouTube thing. And I said, uh, I said, you know, I said, folks, I can't fish right now. So I've been making turkey calls. And, and I said, I'd sell one for $200. And all of a sudden, dozens of people start writing in. Well, gosh, I got my wife involved. She's all involved now. She's doing the ordering part of it. Uh, I'm, I'm sitting in the back here and I make the calls along with uh, my assistant, Sean. I got table saws, I got all kind of planers. I got all this stuff here. And I have uh, all this different wood. Now I've been really kind of specializing on butternut. Butternut seems to be the, the choice of, of, it's kind of musical, you know, wood has tone. And, and so when I get the wood, a lot of it I, I got in Missouri years ago, like from Johnny Morris's farm or from Ronnie Curry's farm, some of my fishing buddies. And I'm, I'm about out of that. I still have a little bit left, but I've had to kind of start buying wood as well. Okay, let's look back here. Now here, here's where it all started for me about 35, 40 years ago in 1980. In fact, it was 40 something years ago. Uh, I started turkey hunting. And right away I joined the Wild Turkey Federation and Rob Keck, he was the executive director for the Wild Turkey Federation. He told me, he says, Roland, if you come to Nashville, this is like 83 or 84, if you come to Nashville and help with, uh, with uh, our, our, our big convention as a celebrity guy, you know, you're a hunter, um, he said, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to Neil Cost and get him to get, donate you a call, you know, and so sure enough, this, is, this isn't my first Neil Cost call. Neil Cost died in 1992, I think it was, but before he died, I'd call him because I, I knew him pretty well. And he gave me a total of three of these calls. Right now, a Neil Cost original boat paddle like this one is worth thousands of dollars. It's just, it's just an incredible thing. So I've been taking wood and I've been crafting it out. I, uh, there's a design, it's exactly the same as these. And I craft it out, I have it exactly the same width. And then I start, I start taking it like this and, and I start, I start, now this one I don't have finished yet, but it's the same size. It's the same size as Neil's. Now Neil has written on the lid and I'll write on the lid too when, when, I, when I make them. But listen to this. Mastered the call making process. I've made over 300 calls now. And so now just this last week, I've made about 20 and I'm ready to send them out. In fact, starting uh, Monday, which will be the third, I guess, I'll have the first turkey calls being shipped. And I got, uh, I got a, uh, about two dozen orders already, and uh, they're $200 a piece. Cotton <laughs> calls, son. Huh? Hundreds of turkeys. I, people don't realize my passion for, for the outdoors. Uh, I hunt deer a little bit, and I hunt you know, elk a little bit, I'll do that, but I hunt turkeys a whole lot. I hunt turkeys as much as 50 days a year. And I've gotten as many as 25 turkeys a year. You know, so I mean, I've, I've got a lot of turkeys. I've got whole big bags of beards and spurs. I did all the Grand Slam stuff back in the 80s. I did a Grand Slam with the bow and arrow, double Grand Slam. I did a Grand Slam with the muzzle loader. Did a Grand Slam with pistols. Now Grand Slam is 
four species of the U.S. turkeys. That's the uh, Osceola here in Florida, the, uh, the, the Merriam out west in the, in the Rockies, the Rio Grande turkey, and that's down in, say, Texas and in the Midwest, and then, of course, the, uh, the eastern turkey, which is the most prevalent. Anyway, these turkeys, these turkey calls work from all, and just for, just for, just kind of, sh 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 you have a lot of equipment here, I got all these lathes, I got, a, I got all this stuff here for milling out stuff, and see, but you got to hand tune everything. I mean, I can, sh I can shape it a lot with stuff like this, but then the process and the tricky thing about making a turkey call is after you take the wood, and you got the wood all, all ready to go, See, so you got to make a taper, you got to taper it, and then you got to put a thing on it, then you got to put it in the machine, and then you have to start sanding it down. Now, the other big thing are these paddles. These paddles aren't, aren't easy to make. You got to take, this is walnut. I take the, I'll take the paddles, and it takes me 15, 20 minutes to just cut it out, and then another 30 minutes to shape it. So I, I spent a lot of time just making a paddle. So it's, it's time consuming. This takes a lot of time, cutting this out. Well then, Coming out back, once I finally get the call saw set up and, and done, you know, I got to tune each one of them, and they don't all work. I throw a few of them away. But I come out here to my wood, wood shop, and uh, I got all kind of stuff out here. I got, of course, a good ventilated fan, and I got sanders and planers and all sorts of things for a little jigsaw for cutting, cutting out, out everything. So, so that's part of it. Okay, the other part, then I've got to put a finish on it. Now, I've been experimenting with a lot of different finishes, and I've even found a waterproof finish that makes it completely 100% waterproof. It's going to be an option soon. I haven't got it perfected yet. I mean, I've perfected it, but, um, but I haven't really... Uh... Now, these calls are calls I've made just the last couple of days, and they're dry, and I have all these different, uh, different finishes on them, and I don't have... They're not, they're not completely dry yet, so they don't have the right tone yet. So all this finish dries better, it's going to sound better. But it'll be better than that. Then, I found this new, new kind of a, a walnut. That's better than here, and the walnut's on the top. I now can take my pen and, and write on this, and it'll really be nice, clear, uh, legible. Uh, writing and I can I can I can autograph it personally to people you know and talk all about the wood where it comes from and talk about how Neil cost a replica call <laughs> anyway it's been keeping me busy that's what I've been doing for the last three weeks but starting tomorrow son I'm gonna go fishing I'll let the turkey calls wait for another couple days because tomorrow is gonna be the day the second of January a big old bass so kind of that's what's happening in my world you know what as a sportsman, I do a lot of different things. I do reloading with my rifles, and I, I, I just like to shoot, and I like to hunt, and I like to fish. You know, I think there's a big crossover when it comes to, uh, to, to, to fishermen. Almost all fishermen have other sporting interests as well. It might be snow, snowmobiling for the people up north. It might be ice fishing. It might be, I don't know, any number of things, even scuba diving and stuff. And I've done all of that a little bit. But my passion is still bass fishing, and turkey hunting. That's kind of where it is. Hey, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, we'll see you again soon.